I wanted to speak about a topic that is probably one of the most controversial subjects and I see it a lot on TikTok and so I just wanted to kind of address that and get your thoughts on that today. If you haven't already, please do like this video, uh, follow my channel here and we'll talk about this type of uh, content um, pretty often here. Please let me know in the comments below um, any other you know, particular topics that you would like to discuss and I'd be glad to make a video on that. So, today's topic is why does God allow babies to be born with leukemia or, you know, cancers? Why, why does God allow pain and suffering? And, and if there's an all-loving, all-powerful God, surely he can allow us to live in this creation of his without all of that, right? So, this particular um, you know, article that I'm pulling from uh, posted in April 27, 2013 by uh, Dr. John Oakes. And like I said, the question is, if, if God is all powerful and omniscient, why does he allow babies to be born with cancer? And essentially what we have to realize, you know, is that for, for starters, we're born into sin. We, we have to get past the notion that, you know, society has given us all um, we look at babies and, 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 you know, just this innocent, sweet little, you know, person who's helpless and needs somebody else to take care of them 24 seven, that they absolutely can do nothing for themselves. So sure they are innocent, but at the same time, we are still born into sin. That is just the way that, uh, this earth that we are in now is now you have to go back to the beginning of God's creation in the beginning God created the earth and he put Adam and Eve in the garden essentially he started with Adam and then uh, he made Adam from the dust and he said uh, from all of the the creatures that he created you know whether it's beast or, or man we all came from the dust and we're all going to return to the dust you have to realize God is eternal death is not a bad thing okay death is all part of life but for us, we see the, the pain and the suffering that comes from death whenever we lose someone. And, and we associate that, that death is, is bad and death is evil. And it's not. It really is not. And we have to look at suffering as the same way because our suffering is, is meant to draw us closer to our Savior. Whenever we go through hard times, whenever we're on those mountaintops, it doesn't matter. Whether on a mountaintop or in a valley, we should be praising God. We should be seeking God at all times in our walk. And that is the true purpose of, of suffering, honestly. It is to draw you closer to God. Because God's job is not to provide um, a world full of just perfect you know, existence and free of pain and suffering. Because if he did that, we wouldn't be obedient. And it's God's job to provide salvation for us. And that's exactly what he did through his son, Jesus. Okay. So the main thing that I want you to understand is like pain, suffering, death. We think of them as evil, but in God's eyes, they are not. And my best friend, um, he's 35 years old. He was diagnosed with leukemia at 16. So he's lived with leukemia for more of his life now than he hasn't. And I can tell you personally that he has never, ever in his life cursed God for his cancer. Never, ever. If you'd like, I can see if I can get him up here and, and we'll, we'll do a video together. It just like your expectation that a loving God, you know, doesn't exist because he gives babies cancer. And that's your justification as to why you don't believe in him is absolutely absurd. Because I can show you. I don't know how many different cancer patients who don't feel that way. So why are you using somebody else's illness as your crutch to keep you from your walk with God and from a relationship with the one person who actually cares more about you than you can even imagine to the point that he sent his only son to pay for your transgressions? Going back to the garden, Adam and Eve were perfect, right? There was no death. There was no sin at the, at the point of creation. We brought that upon ourselves. It started with Eve. Actually, it started with Satan. Satan was the first being to sin. Then came Eve. Then came Adam. But it, it's not like anybody, you know, in that scenario, any one person in that scenario, their sin was, was any greater or less than the other. They were all equally in sin. And we are as well. And that brought that sin into creation. 
death is part of creation now. Death is not evil, but it is part of creation. It is part of life. And so God, yes, he could, but that's just not the way that it works. God is omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, all-being. And, and part of that being like when God says something, he can't just go back and, nope, I'm going to change things essentially. You know, like whenever he said this is the way it's going to be, it is going to be that way. And, and essentially one of the main core, you know, things that, about God himself, obviously, is God is love. And love is the like exact opposite of sin. Like you, you have love on one side and you have sin on the other. And ultimately, the, the, like the biggest form of sin will lead to death. So you have love and death. And that's the, you can't have the two of them together. And so God cannot be in the presence of sin. And so that's why his son came to the earth and died and his blood was shed. So that if you look at, um, you know, when the, the Egyptians were still... Um, ruling over the, the Israelites, essentially, and God sent uh, Moses, and Moses had the, the Ten Commandments, or not Ten Commandments, but the, uh, the Ten Plagues, and one of the plagues, you know, the final plague, essentially, was that the spirit of death was going to travel through the land of Egypt, and whenever the spirit passed over, if you had taken and put the blood of the lamb over your doorpost, the spirit would see that you're covered in the blood, and he would pass over you death would not enter you that is the same that, that that is like foreshadowing what jesus did for us on the cross we when we become a, a born again creature and we are created anew in god's sight we are that but at the same time we're still a sinner we're still dirty we're not clean in god's eyes it's jesus's blood though at this point that's covering us so when god looks at us he doesn't see us he doesn't see that that dirt and that sin on the inside god he sees jesus he sees that blood that's washed us clean. Okay? So, I hope that this video has um, clarified some things for you. I hope it's encouraged you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And, like I said, if you have any other topics that you would like to discuss, I would be glad. Just let me know. And, as you uh, heard earlier, if you haven't already, please do like this video. Follow me here, and we'll talk about all sorts of stuff on this channel.